Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gareth the Master 974 back again today and welcome to another Valve source code tutorial. This time around I'm doing an alternative video to one that I would have done early on in the year. Today I'm doing a video about downloading the 2013 source code from Valve on Linux operating systems and how to compile it ready for basically launching into mods on Linux operating systems and even the Steam Deck. So let's get into the video. So one of the things that I would say is a preliminary step is making sure you get the C++ development tools. So what you would want to do is open up a terminal, which is basically the Linux version of a command prompt. And it could be called different things like a terminal or a console, but it's basically the command line interface that you would use on Linux. So on Debian based Linux operating systems in this video, I'm using Ubuntu. You want to do the command sudo apt-get install build essential and sudo apt-get install gcc-multilib and then g++-multilib in order to target the 32-bit architecture which is what is needed for the source code to compile. Now sudo just means super user and you need your password in particular and install and apt-get just means use the package managers to find these components and download them and install them onto your system. If you are on the Steam Deck, then make sure you do sudo steamos-readonly disable. Um, that way these packages can end up getting installed correctly onto your Steam Deck. And um, it's actually going to be needed for a step that I'm going to get to a little later. Now on operating systems like Manjaro, which is probably what you'll be seeing right now, and the Steam Deck, these are Arch-based Linux operating systems. So what you want to do instead is sudo pacman dash capital S, the capital S is important, then base dash devil gcc dpkg multilib dash devil. So multilib dash devil is what I had to find out on my own because I ended up having issues on Manjaro in particular with the source code not compiling properly. Or well, I think it was actually VPC, uh, not executing as it was supposed to. So that multilib dash devil is something that you would want to do. And so, yeah, that's not covered by the Valve Developer Wiki article. And I had to figure that out on my own after several minutes worth of errors. Now, one thing that is also very helpful is getting a package called Git, which basically means you don't even need to use an internet browser like Chrome or Firefox or anything like that to gain access to the source code. You can just use a terminal or command line interface of some description to end up downloading the source code directly onto your system. So on Debian based, you would want to do sudo apt-get install git. And on Arch based, you want to do sudo pacman dash capital S git to download and install git. So then after this, you want to do git clone https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash valve software forward slash source dash sdk dash 2013. Now what this does is it downloads the 2013 source code and under normal circumstances it will just go into your home directory. So the user's home directory is where you'd find a folder called source sdk 2013 and it will contain both the multiplayer and the single player versions of the code. So what this line is effectively doing is the same as going onto the GitHub website, finding the 2013 source code, downloading a zip of the repository and then extracting the files from that zip folder. So it does it in one command line as opposed to needing to use the internet or an internet browser. So it's just a simpler step and works on Linux. So that's very helpful. So once this is downloaded, you want to navigate to the downloaded source code directory and go to the SP or the MP folder, dependent on which version of the code you want to use. Go to the SRC folder and then right click in that folder and open up a terminal. There should be the option to open a terminal in that folder. And then all you want to do is dot forward slash create all projects and dot forward slash create game projects. Now what this does is you're going to see two new files called everything.mak or mac and games.mac. So essentially you need to build the everything.mac to get all of the projects to compile. 
that would be stuff like the client and the server, VBSP, VVIS, VUADS and all that stuff. And the games.mac would just be the client server, VGUI controls, Mathlib and that stuff. Now, if you get a permission denied error, which I don't think you should, uh, what is advised to do is to go to the SRC DevTools bin and Linux folder and make sure the C cache file is set to run as an executable. This can simply be done by right clicking on the application, going to the properties, and there should be a checkbox near the bottom of the file that says to run it as a program. And then you just want to go into the folder up or basically go to SRC DevTools bin and make sure all of the files there run as executables, especially VPC. However, you really shouldn't have any issues following this step. I'm only including this for the sake of completeness for the video. So at this point, we're going to need to get the Steam client runtime. So essentially, just do the following commands in a terminal. So you want to do cd forward slash, then sudo mcdir or mkdir, then valve, then cd valve to change directory into the valve folder, then sudo wget https colon forward slash forward slash media.steampowered.com forward slash client forward slash runtime forward slash steam dash runtime dash sdk underscore latest dot tar dot xz then sudo tar xvf steam dash runtime dash sdk underscore latest dot tar dot xz then sudo mv steam dash runtime dash sdk underscore 2013 dash 09 dash 05 steam dash runtime as shown in the video and then sudo chown or chown user colon group asterisk dash capital R. Now in this case, user is the Linux username and group is the user group. Typical way of doing this would be to simply do the username and then colon and then the username again. So I'll show you Ubuntu right now. The username is Billy Bob. So user colon group would be Billy Bob colon Billy Bob. On Manjaro, I have selected the username of Pussy, so it's Pussy colon Pussy. And on the Steam Deck, the default username is Deck, so you would just do Deck colon Deck, as I show in the video right now, hopefully. So once this step is done, you can do CD Steam dash one time, and then do dot forward slash setup dot sh, and then you just want to proceed through the instructions. So you want to use all architectures, which is option three. Use the release runtime flavor, which is option one, and then type yes for all of the downloads and updates that are needed. So once this is completed, you can go back to your source code's SP or MP SRC folder, right click, open up a terminal, and then do make dash lowercase f, and then either games.mac or everything.mac, and that starts to compile the code. Now, what you'll see is that there might be errors which I believe is data type conversions from a double to an int or a double to an unsigned char or an int to a byte. But there's no errors, it's only warnings. So as long as there's no errors, all of the projects should build correctly. So the end result of this process is that it creates a client.so and server.so files in the SP or the MP game mod hl2 or mod episodic or mod hl2 mp folder and then the bin folder so on linux the client.so and the server.so files are what's needed for the source mod to run so at this point you can simply copy and paste the mod hl2 mod hl2 mp or mod episodic folder into the steam steam apps source mods folder and then the mod can be played on your linux operating system Assuming that you have installed Source 2013 single player or multiplayer first from Steam. So if you want to know where the Source Mods folder is, then on Debian based Linux, you want to go to home forward slash dot steam, then forward slash steam, steam apps and source mods. You'd want to put the mod hl2 mod episodic or mod hl2 mp folder here. And on Arch based Linux, like the Steam Deck, then you would have to go to home forward slash dot local forward slash share, forward slash steam, then steam apps source mods, and then you'd want to put your mod folder there. Now, if you make any changes to the code, then just simply run the make dash lowercase f, 
then games.mac or everything.mac again, and the changes will be accommodated. This is similar to what the build solution option in Visual Studio would do on Windows. So one thing you can do instead of running this make command every single time you want to accommodate changes is to use a bash script, which is Linux scripting, to basically create an executable file that runs this command every time you want to compile the code. So what I would advise you do is to load up a terminal in the SRC folder where the games.mac and the everything.mac files are, and you can do touch gamecreate.sh, which creates a file in the SRC directory called gamecreate.sh, which is empty at the moment. And what we can do is a command called nano and then gamecreate.sh, which opens up a terminal text editor and allows for the gamecreate.sh file to be edited. So what you want to do is type in hashtag exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash bash, which is known as the shebang. It basically points to the bash interpreter to use and then make dash f games.mac, which is the command that we're going to use to compile the source code. Then you'd have to do control X to close, then press Y to save and then enter to overwrite the file. And as we want this to have executable privileges, then we want to do chmod or chmod plus x gamecreate.sh to make the file run as an executable and then run the executable by doing dot forward slash gamecreate.sh and you can essentially run this file every time you want to compile the code however if you want to make additions it is a bit more complicated now the best method that i found was to navigate to the src game and then either the client or server folder dependent on where you're making changes and find the client or server.vpc file and then open them. So I essentially used a text editor for this, but you can use a terminal and nano as well. And you want to do whatever additions you want. So for example, I added the AR1, which is the AK from Half-Life 2 Beta into the single player server HL2 project. After this, you can go to SRC DevTools bin and then right click, open a terminal and then do dot forward slash VPC plus server forward slash HL2. That would be the command that I would do in my case or whatever command would apply to you. And you can use dot forward slash VPC forward slash H for some assistance. So essentially what this does, it should recreate the necessary dot Mac file. In my case, server Linux 32 HL2 dot Mac for server recompilation, or if you've made client side changes, then it will be for client recompilation. And an alternative method is to actually directly modify the Linux32.mac file in the SRC game client or server, and you need to add the new files into two different places. In a section called CPP files, you need to add it as whatever the file name is, .cpp, then a space, and then a backslash, and then right near the end of the file in a big section called other dependencies, it needs to be as what is shown in the video. It is long and complicated. You can copy and paste one of the existing blocks of code and then change it around to accommodate for the file that you're adding. Now, by making these changes, you'd have to run the make command again or run the game create.sh script. And what it does is it causes a complete rebuild. So it's actually not like Visual Studio at all, where any new files get accommodated like what making changes to the code would do on Linux, as I stated earlier. No, if you add a new file, then it causes a complete rebuild. So it does take a bit of time to build these files. Now, at this point, what I can suggest Steam Deck users to do is to do the command sudo steamos dash read only and enable to basically turn on the read only mode so then you don't end up messing around with important files on your Steam Deck. Now, one thing that I have to say is a limitation for me right now is that I don't actually know how to launch into debugging like what you would do in Visual Studio or even what IDE or basically something like Visual Studio that you can use on Linux to be able to launch into debugging and look for errors and stuff like that. Um, so basically errors would be way more difficult to spot and testing would be more difficult on Linux, at least as far as my knowledge goes. Now, if there are any IDEs that you know of that can be used on Linux, 
that is compatible with the source code and allows for debugging, then I'd really love to know. And you can leave your suggestions in the comments section down below. Um, however, at this point in time, the only solution I can offer at this point is to build the code, compile the code, and then copy and paste the client.so and server.so files into the Steam Steam Apps source mods, name of the mod, bin directory, and then launch into the mod through Steam and test that way. It's a bit inefficient, but that's all I can suggest for now. So yeah, that is pretty much everything I need to say for this video. I've been doing the commentary for over 20 minutes now. I know there's been some screw ups. Hopefully it's not been too bad and hopefully you can follow along with what I've suggested and can understand what is going on. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Like the video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it and hopefully I'll see you again very soon for another video. So take care out there everyone, peace out and see you next time.